Jim's Tim Gresham. And today I'm going to take you through a, uh, a membrane change for the uh, Centec SDMS transcutaneous CO2 and O2 monitor. Uh, we're going to be using the, uh, the training set, uh, not a, a real probe. The training set is only slightly different um, in that it doesn't actually have a membrane on it. It has an orange colored ring rather than on the real probe, a buff colored ring. And so the buff colored ring has a membrane stretched across it. The orange colored one doesn't. It just, it's literally just a ring. Um, so that's what we're going to use for training purposes. Uh, we need a membrane training set. This one, as I said, is the training set. Um, and we also need the insert. Now, when you get one of these, uh, you'll get them in boxes of five. It looks like that. And you'll get one membrane changer that comes preloaded with a, uh, a membrane insert. You buy one of these and two of these. Um, and because these are boxes of five and there's one already loaded in that, um, you can run that through. You can run 10 through each membrane training set and, uh, and then throw the whole lot out and order another one of those and another two boxes. Okay. I like to tend to be a little bit careful with the, uh, with the membrane inserts um, and not put any stress on them. I put them in a little box like this, a hard-covered hard box. Um, you can use a, a little tiny Tupperware container or something like that if you need to cart them around. But the problem is uh, these are on little plastic bendy bits and if they get bent out of shape, they may well um, end up giving you a, an invalid uh, membrane replacement. So let's just be a little bit careful with the membrane inserts um, and uh, we'll go right ahead and, uh, and change the membrane. Okay, so putting the, um, the membrane insert in the membrane changer is actually very easy. Uh, all you really need to do is look for the key shape, the keyhole shape. I'll come up a little bit closer to the camera to show you. Keyhole shape on this device and that's the top of the membrane changing unit. And you also look for the corresponding keyhole shape in that unit. We're going to put one against the other. Just slot it straight in there. And you'll find that actually doesn't fall out. It, it holds there quite nicely. Okay, now putting the bottom and the top together is also reasonably simple. We're going to look for this, this, this path around here and the Centec logo there. And that curves around to a path down there. Now we're going to match that up with the door on the bottom. That's the door. Okay, there's no other thing that could be called a door. That's a little door. And what I generally say, just to remember, is that the path leads to the door. Okay, now with our fingertips, at this stage we don't push that area. With our fingertips, we push the path onto the door, and then we turn it in the direction of the arrow. See the arrow? So we're going to turn that that way, and that's going to lock and set the membrane changing set. Okay, so that one's ready to go. Let's see how we go. The next thing to do is to choose a solid uh, bench top, probably not a breakfast tray or a, uh, or a, a meal trolley, um, but find a good solid lab bench top or a, a hospital bench top. Put it right on the edge. We take our probe, and uh, this one has our little dummy membrane on it. And we're going to um, put the probe into the door. Now, it really can't go any way but the way it's intended. If you try and put it upside down, it's not going to do it anyway, and it slides in the way it's intended. And you'll notice that it's actually cradled in there. If I give it a bit of a push, it springs right back into position, and we make sure it's pushed all the way to the back wall. And it's nicely cradled. It's actually hanging on to the, uh, uh, what I like to call a little can holder shape in there. All right. Now the first click on any of these is going to be the um, removal of the old membrane. So let's go ahead and do that. There's a couple of things to keep in mind uh, with, the, with the membrane changing system, and that is that you can't really be too rough with it. Uh, you've got to put plenty of pressure on it. Um, and the other thing to keep in mind is that at, at a certain point during the membrane changing process, there is going to be a bead of electrolyte sitting on top of the probe. The probe needs to stay flat. 
We don't want to pick it up. Uh, we don't want to show people. We don't want to tip it up. We don't want to get it into the, into the nicest possible and most comfortable um, position to be able to turn it either. It is a little, di little difficult to turn, but we really have to get used to turning it um, while it's on the, on the bench top. Okay, so ultimately it's a push and a turn. A push and turn, push and turn, push and turn. And that's all we really need to remember. The push needs to be from directly above um, and the turn needs to be while it's stationary and level on a bench top. Okay, so our first one is just a quick, we, we always say, we always like to say that we're resuscitating a patient when we do this. So we're going to put our hands directly on top of it, both hands, and I'm going to put most of my body weight on top of that. Hold it there for three seconds and let it go. Also make sure it doesn't stick to your hand if you've got slightly heady, sweaty hands like me. And then we're going to, oh actually I will, at this point I will pick it up and show you, but it's generally not a good idea to do that. So if I come a little bit closer, we can see now that that orange ring has been pulled off the membrane. And that's our first step. Now normally you wouldn't pick it up off the table at this point, but I wanted to show you. So I'm gonna put it back, right back on the table and I'm going to turn it. So that was our first click, our first push, and we're going to turn it. Turn it till it won't turn anymore, and I'm putting quite a lot of pressure on it. I generally find that if I hook my finger over that little flange there and hold it on the back, I can turn it reasonably easy. The next click puts a little sponge down on top of the probe and gives it a twist to give it, give it a good clean. Okay, and then we turn. Now it's not gonna turn until you click it again. So there we go. This one, cracks open a little vial of electrolyte and leaves a bead on top of the probe. So it's very important at this point to give it a good push, let it go, make sure it doesn't stick to our hand, and we turn it. We've got a little bead of electrolyte on top of the probe, We've got to be a little bit careful, okay? Turn it till it doesn't turn anymore, and the next click puts the membrane on, the new membrane on. Good, firm push now, put most of your body weight on top of it from directly above, and then we can turn again, and you'll notice that we've got a brand new membrane on the probe. If you didn't notice before, um, that ring, before it was changed, didn't actually have those little pen marks on it. So we can actually tell that it's changed. Okay, now, the next step with the training set, particularly, is to push it again. And we don't have to have it sitting on the bench for this. We can turn it again one more time, and the whole thing falls apart. Okay, we then take the insert out. If this was a, was a real one, um, we would tear open a new one when it came time to train changing again, and we'd reload it. This is our training set, so what I'm going to do is reset this one. I'm gonna take it out of there, and I'm going to put it into the other side. Click it back in. So now, essentially, we've made that into a brand new one. Okay. So we can do that. Keyhole shape on the keyhole shape on that side. Push it on. Generally it won't fall out. I think if it does fall out, it's probably gotten a little bit old and you probably need to change over your little hockey puck applicator. Okay, the little path flows towards the door. Turn it, push it on. Let's do a quick another one. We put it in, there's only one way it can go in. It's nicely cradled on a bench top. Old membrane off, turn, sponge, turn, electrolyte solution, good push. Turn, new membrane on the probe, turn, voila. Now one thing is very important is that you get this once you've uh, done it for real on the, on the genuine machine, you get this and you look at it under a very bright light and make sure under the membrane there are no air bubbles. Um, we won't, we do, we, there's no point in looking at this one because this one's obviously a dummy, but you really need to have a look and make sure that it's a nice clear finish. There are no air bubbles. Air bubbles tend to migrate across the surface of the pH electrode and cause, again, concentration gradients. We don't want that happening. Um, so make sure there are no air bubbles. If there are, then repeat the process. Uh, generally, 98% um, of the time, you'll get a very good change uh, with no hassles if you follow the process that I've just been through.
Okay. One thing you really need to remember at this point is once you change the membrane on the device, you go into the menu of the machine, and I can do that now. I can go down into the mem menu, and I can go open the door, and we can see the membrane change option has become a light. Hit that, select membrane change, and we want membrane change done, down the bottom. That's very important. We say the membrane change is done because that resets the clock on the machine for another 42 days or whatever you've set the membrane life to be. Um, and then when the time comes for that to be replaced, then the machine will tell you to replace it. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you've uh, found that informative and uh, I'll look forward to the next video.